you guys recording. You're gonna, you're gonna record me recording? <laughs> yes. Would that push us into an alternate alternate dimension? It'd break the fourth wall. It would break the fourth wall? <laughs> yes. Is that like time traveling or no? No, not that kind of wall. Oh. That's the fifth dimension. You seem way too knowledgeable on this. No. <laughs> All right. Hello, welcome to On The Brink. We are installing a throwout bearing on a T56 transmission today. For the red truck. Uh, For the red truck. So this involves really small numbers. I don't, I'm not big into small numbers. I'm more of a eyeball and hammer type of guy. Curtis, Curtis knows how to do small numbers and I have a calculator. So we should be able to figure our, our way through it, but We've never done this before. We're gonna try and help you guys out. Uh, you can learn along with us. So what we have is a slip-on style throwout bearing. So this literally just slips onto this collar here. And then this whole assembly will bolt on here. We'll show you guys how to do that when we get there. I got this from McLeod. Free sticker. Um, then Tick just released this awesome uh, measuring tool. It's fairly new. Uh, you get this guy, you get a shim pack, and you get uh, some bolts and really long spacers. Now what this does is we'll mount this on here and it'll give you a known distance, right? From here to here. Tick is definitely the way to go for all this stuff. I got all my stuff from Tick minus the actual transmission, which I kind of regret. But this is where we're at now. So we gotta take a measurement on the transmission and we gotta take a measurement on the bell housing in the truck. We already have the clutch, flywheel, and bell housing in the truck. So we're gonna go down there first and show you guys how to do that. See if we can uh, figure our way through this. We'll get it. I don't need these, why'd I bring these? Oh. You bring the, you didn't. didn't. I didn't bring nothing. Nope, I just showed up. Look at that. That's a through hole. One of the few. Actually, no, most of these are through holes. We only need two, two shorts, don't we? I'm not sure. Just these bottom two. Uh, you guys will see that this tool has an arrow on it up there that points to the top. And then this one, he's putting washers on. Uh, so that we're able to get it tight. Really? What? That's the tool you're going to use? Yeah, why not? Alright. You said it didn't need to be very tight. Alright. Then we... Zero. And then measure... It's a 2.566. Is a 2.574. 2. 2. 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 
All right, so now we got to install the throwout bearing on the actual transmission. It comes with uh, all this hardware. There's two sets of bolts. They both thread in. I don't know which one to use, so I'm using the one that feels right. Uh, it also comes with fittings. One's a bleeder. I don't know what this one is, a pass-through, and then there's another one. I think if you're not going to use the quick connect fitting, but we're going to use it, so. All right, putting this uh, plate on first, right? Collar, yes. Collar, no shim. Yeah, the shim will eventually go behind that if and when we need it. Yes. Bolts in. Are you just snugging these up for now? Yeah, get them nice and snug by hand, good enough. Because eventually we'll put Loctite on all this. We will? I figured we would. I only have red Loctite, and red Loctite makes me nervous. It is, but... I mean, they are pan heads, so they're supposed to somewhat lock in themselves, but... And this collar, if you guys get one like this, this collar has two ends on it. You see this side's beveled? This side's not. Uh, pretty sure we decided the beveled end goes on this way because this has a little bevel on it. it matches up there. And that still worries me. I don't know. Put this on. And that's just a slip on style. It's double o rings, it just sits on there. And then when you're doing your final install, you're gonna make sure your fittings are pointed towards your holes here, or here and here. Get your lines out. Now, the spacer is four, in, four and a half inches. Yeah. So this is our known distance. You put it down. Hmm. Actually, no, where'd you put that? Uh, this one. Up here? Yeah, I believe so. And then this bottom one here. Come on. Arrow goes up again. Arrow goes up. All right, then we take a measurement again. To get the measurement of this, make sure everything's back. Was it at zero? Yeah. Two point one nine. Two point two two point two two point one nine two point one nine so we're looking at about two point one nine at its shortest. Don't you add those together? We have to subtract the difference. You have to subtract them. Subtract the difference. And that gives you your gap in there. So we can't shim this out. <laughs> okay, so we have issues. Spoiler alert. So the way this, this thing comes with stuff I don't think you have to use. So we got this, which is like a shim, but it's really thick I'm not gonna use that so this is what bolts to the transmission and then it came with this collar which I showed you earlier but when we use that collar to get our measurements we're way too close so shimming it does not help us it makes it worse this part of the throw out bearing here see that this screws in and out it's like an adjustment screw so what we're gonna do now is 
Option one was machine this down. We're not going to do that at this point in time. We're going to screw this out. Well, first of all, we're going to put a shim in. Curtis wants to put the biggest one in. So we're going to put in the uh, 125 thousandths in. Then we're going to put this on and then turn it to where our numbers are what they need to be. And I'm just hoping that's correct, right? So why else would this screw like that? The only issue is there's really nothing to hold this in place, except the lines will keep it from moving to a degree. I don't feel great about it, but uh, okay, this is the way we're going. There you go, Curtis. Uh, I have confidence in, it. confidence in it. You can't even speak. I can do. Now this. We need something over 2.2. We're at 2.5. So you need it in more? Out more. Roughly what, one rotation? Every rotation is one. There's a point one it looks like. Point three eight. I don't care for how much that adjustment's sticking out. That looks like a lot. Mm -hmm. That's where you're saying that's where you want it. Uh, we gotta do the math. Two where we need it. Where's that? What, what's the number? Uh, it would be a two point. Three eight. Yeah, looks like a steady two point three eight point two. That's the two hundred thousandths. All right, let's, so let's do a little recap here because uh, I feel like you guys pretty much just watch us fumble around, which I do understand is on point with our channel, but this video is supposed to kind of maybe help somebody a little bit. So I'm going to recap this. Don't take this as gospel, though, because this is the first time I've done it. We've done it. We don't know if it worked yet either because we can't test it because none of our garbage runs. So put it on paper here. So what we're shooting for is between 150 and 200 thousandths of total gap between that throw out bearing and the fingers of our clutch. So what you do, clutch side, you take a measurement with that tool, right? You get your measurement and you subtract it from the thickness of the tool, which is 0.25, right? That gave us a number of 2.32. Then we came down and we did it on the transmission side, you've seen. We take our known distance, which is 4.5, which is from that tool. Our measurement is uh, 2.38. We subtract those two. We got 2.12. You then take that number and that number and you subtract them, which gives you your, your, your distance there. We are right at 200 thousandths. So we called it good, A, because I don't really know what we're doing all that much. And B, the other thing is to think about them fingers on that clutch when you've seen us under there. When the as the clutch wears, they will pull out. 
some, right? So in my mind, it's good to be toward the top side of, you know, the, the specifications we're allowed for our distance because it will eventually get closer. So we are calling that good. Uh, we'll find out, I don't know, shortly when we get this thing running, uh, how well it worked. We still got to talk about a clutch pedal stop, which uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to make that yet. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. All right, so until next time, we'll see you guys in the future.